I'm going to do another wet fly today. This is the Rio Grande King. This was uh, requested by a YouTube follower. Uh, this is a fly from their past that they very much liked and requested that I tie one up for them. Interesting thing about this, this is uh, the recipe that I have on this one is the one out of Ray Bergman's book, Trout. But when I was doing a little bit of research on this fly, there's a number of different variants to this with different throat colors, tail colors, and even the, the chenille body colors, as well as with ribs on them. The original does not have a rib. It has a tip on the back and the tail, uh, but this is the original recipe, or I should say the recipe that's in Ray Bergman's book, Trout. But it, at one time, it was a very, very popular wet fly. I think it probably would, as a matter of fact, I know it would still produce. So, um, and I've tied some of these, this is in a size six, so I'm gonna probably tie some in a size four, just to throw them around this summer and see what I can do with them. But that's the Rio Grande King. I'll go ahead and get started. start the Rio Grande King by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3366, excuse me, 3399 in a size 6. Go ahead and debarb the hook. There is a tip on this and for a tip I am using some size 14 Danville gold tinsel. Now I the body on this is a black chenille, so I don't have to worry about a the thread darkening up a floss or anything like that. So I will go ahead and attach my thread. I'm using a black Danville six aught thread for this. And I will advance this almost down to the end of the shank, just past the point and before the barb. And that is where I will attach my tinsel for the tip. I'm going to attach that with the silver side out. And now I'll advance down three more wraps and that will place me at the end of the body. Turning the hook over. I'll put four wraps in, uh, going down the hook shank and four wraps back up for the tip. There is a tail on this, and the recipe for the Rio Grande King just calls for a yellow hackle tail. I'm going to use some yellow goose shoulder. I've already got these cut off of the feather. I'll match those up. I want to get the tips even. I'm going to put these in such that the concave sides are against each other and that way the tail will flare out just a little bit. I get those evened up. I want to measure those. I'm going to go about from behind the eye of the hook to the bend. I like the tail to be just a little bit longer. those tied in, make certain they're positioned right on top of 
the hook shank. And I'll trim away the excess so that it's the length of the body. The body on this is a black chenille. I'm using a fine black rayon chenille. Probably see it a little bit better here. It's just very, very fine. I'll pull the fluff out of one end. I want to expose the core fibers of that because I want to make certain that's what I'm tying in. I tie those in so that I have just a little bit of a gap right here. That way my very first wrap as I'm coming around, the chenille will actually, I pulled that out of whack, the chenille will be wrapping right on the side where I want it to. I'm going to advance my thread forward, a little bit of wax on my thread. Touching turns aren't as important right here because the chenille will cover up a lot of things, but I like to just do that as kind of be consistent. Stop about an eye length from the eye of the hook. Now this rayon chenille often will flatten out. I don't know if you can see it on that piece there. Here's another one. On the card, this is, this is shorter, it's real fine, so it's not as bad. But on the card, oftentimes it, it won't have a round or roundish kind of body. It gets flattened out. So what I'm going to do is put my hackle pliers on here up from the hook so that I've got plenty of room to put the body on. And now I'm going to twist this. Let me trim this away a little bit here. I'm going to twist this clockwise. See what it does is it tightens it all up, it tightens those cords up underneath and it tightens up the body. So the body looks a little bit rounder. I'll start to palmer that around and you notice that, like I said, I left a little bit of space of the core there when I tied that in so that I didn't have the chenille kind of piling on right there. It just comes right around underneath nice and tidy. I can make certain that I'm getting this wrap here. I'm getting any thread wraps back here by the tag and the tail will all get covered up with that very, very first wrap. Just advance this on up. You might have to stop every now and again and just twist that up a little bit more. Advance that all the way up to the thread. Secure that in and trim away the excess. There is no rib on this, as I've mentioned. Clean this area up here for our throat and our wing. Before I tie in the throat and wing, one of the things I like to do, because the chenille can tend to have try to kick out the throat a little bit or even the wing up a little bit. So right where they come in, I'm just going to trim some of that chenille on the top and bottom. It really does not affect the fly. In terms of fishing or its looks. But I just want to trim a little bit where that's going to get tied in, and that will look a little bit nicer when I apply the throat and the wing. For the throat, I'm using a brown schloppen. I'll get maybe about three eighths of an inch of the uh, the rachis here, this feather, get those fibers out perpendicular so they're all nice, the tips are all nice and even. Peel those off, set those down on the table, and then I'll go to the other side, do the same thing. I'll get these all straight, the tips even, 
peel those off. Get those all clustered together, and then I put that on top of the other one. So the concave sides are facing each other, and they flatten out. And that will give me a nice little clump of feather fibers, barbs, I should say, for my throat. I like the throat to go about halfway down the point to the, the end of the throat or the barb, maybe just a little past the uh, point there. Cure that in and trim away the excess. Wrap those butt ends in so that and smooth everything off so I have a nice platform for my wing. The wing on the Rio Grande King is a, just a white, usually duck quill if it's a smaller size um, hook. I'm using some goose quill. I've already cut these out. I'm going to match these up, just like I've shown in some other videos. First thing I want to do is make certain I have the tips even here. With the tips even, I can then look and see. I think I have on the slip that is on my side, I have a little bit, maybe one or two barbs too many. I'll reach in here with my bodkin. And oh, I got one from both sides. Just take that out. <clears throat> I accidentally hooked onto the other one too. But no, no worries. You can just massage that all back in. So now both my slips are the same width. There we go. I'm going to measure this so that it goes about halfway down the tail. I help this a little bit. And then draw this on down to the head. Put in a few wraps to secure it. Make certain that it doesn't get twisted over one way, which this did. Remember, you can always, if you're not happy with the results, you can always take the wing back off. Can't do this indefinitely. Usually you can only get a few attempts. But this kind of, instead of all compressing in the same spot, it kind of rolled on itself. I'll try that one more time. I know it all should just look like magic and just happen and come together all on the first attempt, but it doesn't. You also usually end up with one side looking a little bit better than the other. So, Like I said, if you're not happy with it, just undo it and try it again. That one felt better. You do often get these where the uh, wing will get kicked up like this. And like I said, that's mostly because of the chenille. And there's just, you know, there's maybe some other techniques you could use but i think that that will work pretty well trim away the excess we moved a little bit there
We'll clean up the head, covering all those butt ends up and any of the wing material. I have a little bit of sh uh, the white showing under the thread. Um, I'll probably leave it because I've got some black lacquer I'm going to put on this. And it's more important that I don't have a, a large bulky head on this. I'm going to flatten out my thread. Put in my whip finish. Little head cement on both sides. That will soak on down in there, and I'll put some black lacquer on that, and that will complete our Rio Grande King. That wing could be a little bit better, but that's the nice thing about tying these flies is that you get to take a look at them and decide afterward this is better or that should be better or that went in real well and then you can tie another one believe me over time if you keep doing enough of these wet flies those skills will definitely improve however sometimes quick note sometimes you get some of these quills that for some reason the, the barbs they just don't want to cooperate. They don't match up well. As you can see with this one right here, I got some ragged tips on this one, whereas this one's really nice. So they may not give you the right shape that you're looking for. There's things that you can do with some of those in terms of steaming them or and or ironing them, try and get those a little bit better. But this is a fishing fly, and I think that when this is fished and this sweeps right back down like this, like it, it will, I think it will be just fine. So that is the Rio Grand King, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm.